How are you guys? Good, good. How are you? Fine, thanks. Hi, this is Sarah. Is Randy on the line? Yes. Okay. Hello, I'm here. Hello, I'm here. Thanks, Randy. Thank you. That was that? Yeah, I was just trying to figure out how many people we had. I think oh, we have okay. seven. Okay. I've got seven right now. That's what I had too, David. Oh, we've got Randy and Art, so I think that's eight. Or seven. Seven, I think. I think it's seven. Art, Randy, me, John, George, Charlene, and Cliff. Yep. Okay. Did I miss anybody? No. Okay. No. All right. My computer says it's four o'clock, so I'll open the regularly scheduled meeting for uh, August with the Jefferson County Planning Board. I'll call that meeting to order. Uh, we do have a quorum present, so we are legal in that aspect. Uh, Andy, make whatever announcement you have to as far as reporting the meeting and why we're meeting by Zoom. Right. Uh, yes, we we are meeting by Zoom uh, consistent with the state declaration of an emergency with the pandemic. And they extended it to, I think, middle of next month. Um, and then, so in doing that, we record it um, that's required. And I'd like uh, anyone who's on the call that their name doesn't pop up, could they tell us their name in the chat so that we can record everyone who's um, attended and that we're aware of them? Um, that, that's all I had. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments there before we get going? Anybody? Okay. First order of business is the approval of the minutes from the July meeting. You received a copy of those. Is there any additions, corrections, or deletions? If, so not, if not, I'll make a motion that the minutes be accepted. Is there a second? Yep. Aye. If, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are accepted. All right. Uh, any communications, Andy? Um, yes, the we've had, I sent out uh, two letters that were received via email from uh, the neighbor of the French Creek Marina project. I sent one, I believe, um, end of July and then right after our last meeting. Then I sent one today that I received um, yesterday. Yeah, I think yesterday. And um, so they're, they're from a neighbor of the French Creek Marina project that we reviewed, I believe in April and then perhaps May, we reviewed a, a variance and a site plan review and since our review, the project expanded by another parcel and um, the neighbor feels that we should review it again, but it hasn't been referred to us again. So we're, we're sort of not involved at this point in time. Um, so I don't know if anyone read the correspondence or not, um, but you know, we can talk about it or however you want to proceed. Well, does anybody else have any comments there? Uh, was the attorney uh, for the town here? No, that's a different town. Diff okay. Uh, I thought he said town of Alexandria, but okay. Well, you know, I, I, I read the whole thing, Andy, when you sent it around. This is Cliff. And uh, uh -huh. the only thing that's, that's, that's almost a month ago. And the only thing that sticks with me right now, other than uh, she put a, a lot of effort in and did a lot of work on it. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. But the thing was the fact that I, I believe she made the point that uh, 
the project was not submitted by the owner of the property in that. Is there, do you know anything that you can uh, comment on about that? Um, well, we, we usually, when, when something like that happens, we usually say they should get written authority. Um, somehow we, we didn't discuss it at that time. Um, but my understanding is that, that the, um, owner of the Marina, his son works there. So I, I assume that he's an officer of the Marina. I mean, it, it's sort of, again, a, a local thing to verify these types of issues. We have 30 days to review them. We do our best to check on things. And if we, we may not comment on something, it doesn't mean it's not an issue. It just means we didn't raise it at that time. Um, so I'm not, I'm not saying any, none of those issues aren't relevant to the, the village but it's something that's out of our hand and we can't go back and redo a review based on new facts or new understandings. I, so. I think the, the lady is correct in her approach. I mean, I think she has to go back to uh, the village board and the planning board and make her thoughts known that um, there were major improvements to the project or major changes to the project that maybe should have been returned to us for additional review. But other than that, I don't think we can have any involvement in it other than that. Right. Any other thoughts? Um, I did follow up with the zoning officer a couple of times. He never called me back on, on any of it. And, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know how many times I can harass someone about about a project that they didn't refer, you know, once it changed. Mm -hmm. Well, I think maybe when we send out our uh, January form letter there advising them of the need to submit projects, we can stress also the, the need to resubmit a project if it's uh, significantly changed. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is that it for that communication? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Any other comments? People want to talk to us about anything other than agenda items? Yes. Um, I, I just want to ask, um, Mr. Simmons, are you here for a project? I'll do star six and then we can hear you. Were you referring to Mr. Silver? No, Mr. Simmons, Scott okay. Simmons. All right, thanks. Uh, still can't hear you. Oh, here comes technical aid. Okay. Um, he could also type it in the chat box if he prefers, then we would know. All oh, right. So this is Art Dadman. I assume that he is uh, interested in the project in Burville. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. All right. Um, All right let's try Sarah, would you mind doing that one first? Am I back on, am I? Yeah. We can hear you now, yes. Perfect. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, no problem. Were you, Andy, was he first in line as far as signing in? Uh, well, I think... Oh, actually, I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's take uh, his project. Oh, Andy, on. we have the town yep. of Alexandria, too, and that Mr. Silver. Right. Well, uh, yeah, I guess we need to do that one first. Um, That's fine. All right. Yep, my bad. And then we'll do um, the Burville one after that. Okay. Yep. Okay, town of Alexandria. They're going to propose some more to it. Go ahead. Sarah, who's ever it? Sarah, yep, and Andy. Okay. Uh, so, do we see the town of Alexandria now? There you go. Yes. Okay. So the town is proposing 
uh, a moratorium on site plan review uses on islands in the marine residential district. Um, so these are the islands, I mean, we'll, we'll get a better map in a second, but these are the islands in, in their town, uh, not including the village islands, of course. Um, and you, you can see here is the marine residential zone, which is the uh, teal color, I think. Uh, and, and all the islands outside the village, um, except for the PDD part of Wellesley Island, um, but all the rest of the islands. And they're doing this, um, uh, let's see. So it, it's a moratorium, which is a, a pause in the land use procedures um, in that marine residential zone. Um, and they are, trying to look at whether or not all these uses here would be allowed in the future. So currently these are allowed marinas, uh, multifamily dwellings, hotels, motels, resorts, um, so on and so forth. You can see here in black. And um, due to the Sport Island proposal, they obviously um, were more aware of, of uses that are allowed um, and potentially their impacts on um, other uses in the island. So they're, they're doing this to analyze their LWRP, which is the local waterfront revitalization program plan that the state worked on with them, looking at those recommendations and also looking at an analysis, analysis of potential uses, which would, should be allowed on the island. Uh, again, based on the, residential uh, prevalence on many of them. So we, um, let's see, the, the only comments I had were based on the New York State Department of State. They have criteria for land use moratorium for establishing them. And what you're supposed to do is have a reasonable time frame uh, as measured by the action to be accomplished. The what term. is the time frame, Andy? What's the time it's frame? Twelve for... months. Twelve good. Twelve okay. months, yeah. and they they wrote it up. They they might extend it for six more if if needed, um, but it's twelve months at this point. Then a public purpose justifying the moratorium, which I think is pretty well established. They're trying to protect uh, residential and seasonal residences. Um, also addressing a situation where a burden imposed by the moratorium is shared by the public at large, which it, it is shared by all the island property owners. Um, and then adhere to the procedure for adoption laid down by the Enabling Act, which I assume they're doing, and then um, have a certain time when the moratorium will expire, which at this point would be 12 months. Um, so that's, that's what I had. Any other board members with any comments? Yeah, I've got one comment. Uh, it's just a procedural one. I just think it's a good idea that we support the idea. But I, what I don't understand is, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the past when we've had moratoriums, we've sent it back as a their local concern only. And I, I noticed we got an approval here. What's, what's the difference? Well, um, my, my feeling was that a lot of times the moratoriums are more, well, I guess I would say less controversial actually um, with the project that we just saw last month and our board felt that it was worthy of a disapproval recommendation. I felt like supporting this um, idea of a moratorium to really look at their uses was a good idea was a good thing to do so that that's why it's, it's that way cliff i think you may be referring to some of my comments and they pertain to uh municipalities who were only going for a six month moratorium on certain items and i've always brought up the point that uh, procedural items take up a lot of public hearings and stuff like that so that six months wouldn't be acceptable uh, i've always been the thought that uh, they should be at least a one year moratorium 
No, no, I, re I recall that. In fact, I knew you'd be saying something about that. But no, I'm just saying normally what we do is we send it back as it's, it's an issue of local concern only, and, uh, and we leave it up to them to make the determination. They're obviously interested in doing this. So it's, uh, you know, I'm just curious about approvals because I have not, I do not recall us uh, putting a pr approving more times in the past than any of the stuff that I recall. Yep, agreed. So, so Andy has said, in effect, that the only reason we're doing that is because it was controversial and was a lot of interest by local uh, landowners. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, and I, I think that uh, from time to time, towns need to re-examine their districts and their uses, and we probably don't do that often enough. Mm -hmm. So again, just sort of supporting the effort and, and, and how important it is, I think, in this particular case. Any other well, comments? Well, this is Archie Adderman. A comment I have on this, it's, I'm glad for the 12 months, the only issue I can think of is if they could speed that along a little sooner than that by waiting a year at this time, that's going to lose the opportunity for any um, type of uh, project for next year as it gets very late into the fall. So if they could, we could get that done by, say, June or July, it would be, it would be nice. I don't know if we could encourage that or not. Well, they can certainly finish it up a lot quicker, but they're giving themselves the, the year. Uh, there are certain built-in uh, procedural aspects concerning public notification and public uh, 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 public meetings there to determine the project that way. So I think, um, you know, a year is, is adequate enough time, uh, but I just don't want to see them, you know, wait until that end, but they, they know their own procedural aspects, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Any other comments? All right, uh, staff has made recommendation that this is a project that should be approved with our comments stated above. Is there a second? I'll second that. Ooh, is that Randy? Okay. Yes. Moved and seconded uh, for approval. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any approved, uh, opposed? Okay. Did the attorney have any comments on that? I didn't have any comments. Uh, I, I appreciate everybody's time uh, in reviewing the matter. The staff at the planning uh, department has been particularly helpful in my conversations with them yesterday. And your comments uh, are taken to heart in that it's better in everybody's interest if we can move this along faster. And that I'm sure the town will attempt to resolve this issue as quickly as it can. Uh, mm -hmm. It just wanted to give itself ample period of time to completely study the issue and making sure that we're allowing development where it's appropriate and prohibiting it where it's not. Good. Okay, good. Thank you for your comments that way. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're moving on to the town of Watertown then. Sarah, um, you're up. Yeah, this is Sarah. I just noticed that the town, is the town of Ellisburg next in the ABC order? Uh, no. No, okay, because they were on the line anyway. I didn't know. Okay, let me yeah. try to figure out how to put the water down. Yeah, the soy, Oya Solar Project applicant is also on um, the line. That's Peter McAuliffe. But oh. I'll go to, I, okay. I can do whatever you guys want to do. Well, you, you said you're going to do the Burville Power okay. one. So let's do that one and then adjust okay. our comments if we need to. All right, what do you see? Map of the town of Watertown. Watertown. Oh, okay, we're, we're good then. Um, so this project is for Burville, Burville Power. Let's see, we have a site plan review for a proposed addition at Burville Power. It's located at 2 
5371 State Route 12, uh, right about there. This um, verbal powder how were, sorry, can't say that word. It's at the end of Brookside Drive. This is Route 12. Um, it's right next door to the credit, uh, Farm Credit East, I think it's called. Correct. Um, Correct. It's surrounded by rural, residential, agricultural, and commercial uses. The site is zoned uh, business, which allows retail services with site plan review. Uh, this is zoomed in aerial photo. Um, it shows the existing drive lane and the main building. Um, the proposed addition that they're going to be doing is going to connect these two. Whoops, I need to put on my pointer. Sorry. Uh, it's the addition is going to connect these two buildings. Um, here's just a photo of Burville Power in the road. Uh, this photo is um, looking back at it. You can see the arrow kind of shows between the two buildings where the addition will be. Um, this is from the actual property. This is where the addition will be in between these two buildings. Um, so here we have the driveway and some of the parking area. The orange buildings are the existing buildings. The pink is the proposed addition. The proposed addition is 40 feet by 60 feet for a total of 2,400 square foot. It'll connect these two buildings right here. It's also going to have uh, 12 inch overhangs on each side. 12, 12 okay. feet. 12 feet, sorry. Um, and then in terms of comments, we have a building permit is required from Jefferson County Code Office. An agricultural data statement is required as the project is located within 500 feet of a farm operation within a New York State Ag District. And for local comments, the site plan should depict the parking and loading spaces so the local board can properly evaluate their adequacy. Um, any questions on that one? Or does Just the applicant want to speak? Any questions or comments? If not, uh, staff has made recommendation that this is a project of local concern only and to be returned to the applicant with our comments. Motion made. Is there a second? Second, Lisa. Second. I guess John got his hand up first. Okay, John. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. This goes back to the local town now for whatever uh, additional action they need. Okay. All right. Now, you guys tell me the order you want to do the rest of the projects. Uh, who came first or whatever? Yeah, I think Ellisburg is next. Okay. Thank you, guys. We're all set. Okay. Yes. Yep. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Guys. Okay, uh, Clayton Ellisburg. All right. Um, now, is we going to be able to do all of these with one motion, or do you want to do them separately? Is there people from the applicant for this project? So this one, I think there is. That's what Sarah said. Okay. Good. Take uh, the project, Sarah. Go to it. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So this is in the town of Ellisburg. Um, <clears throat> the proposal is by Oya Solar, and they're proposing a utility scale five megawatt solar voltaic array on 36 and a half acres out of 207.1 acre parcel. Um, it, it's up here um, in the town. It's along. Um, 91, I think, County Route 91, sorry. And then Swan Swan Road is up here. So, you know, like I said, Swan Road here and then County Route 91 here. This is the, the entire parcel. And um, this this is where there'll be um, panels here and, and along here. And then the rest of it will be what it is now. Um, you can see there are some homes in the area and then here and obviously the rest are farm fields and wooded 
excluded areas within the agricultural rural, rural residence zoning district. And um, this is what the site looked like uh, last week, one of those almost rainy days. And um, this is the one of the houses nearby, uh, just for as a reference point. Um, I, I, so I took the photo on County Route 91 here. Um, there, the town zoning law does have a reference to not developing um, more than 50% of the uh, project um, or of the parcels prime ag soils. So here's a map showing the whole parcel and the prime ag soils. Um, but as you can see, this is only about 17, 18% of the parcel. So as far as I can tell, they meet that limitation. Um, here's the site plan of the project showing the panels here in uh, like a bluish color. And also there's two entrance roads proposed so one here and then one here um, the interconnection to the grid is will be here so that's where those um, power poles will be visible right right in this area so they're proposing landscaping here um, this is that house i took a picture of earlier and then landscaping here landscaping along here and and as well as here so there is a screening as part of the project. Um, <clears throat> there are some wetlands in the area. I believe they're federal wetlands. And the yellow is where they're going to disturb those wetlands. So it's a, it's a small part of it, but it, it's relevant to the um, Corps of Engineers. Um, but as we talked to DEC, they're part of the review as well, depending on some kind of factor. So I, I wrote a comment on that. Um, so th this is a rendering of the proposed landscaping. So this is um, year one of their size here. And then this is year five. Uh, this is estimating the, what their size will be after five years. And this would be what it would look like without those. So this just gives you an idea of how that may look. Um, this is another picture of it. Uh, this is an interconnection that really the applicant doesn't have a choice on that, where that's located. Um, but here's the project without any landscaping. Here's what it'll be. Again, the one year and the five year estimate. Um, so our comments were um, that the proposed two access drives require a permit from Jefferson County Highway Department. Uh, the applicant should contact Watertown International Airport Manager and Fort Drum staff to ensure anticipated flights and training activities will not be impacted um, and a glare hazard analysis should be completed. Uh, I forgot to mention these panels will track the sun so they kind of go along with the sun's movement. Um, also, I, I noted the small areas of wetlands disturbance should be reviewed by DEC and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, lastly, the local board should ensure the proposed evergreen buffer is planted and maintained to limit the aesthetic impact on immediate neighbors. Um, so th that's what I had on it. Questions, comments? This is the five meg is well below the the 25 for the federal permits, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Art, any questions? You're from down that way. Okay. Um, I think it is just fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, uh, staff has made recommendation that this is a project of local concern only and to be returned to the applicant with our comments. Motion made, is there a second? I'll second. Who's that, Charlene, thank, thank you. you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay.
Thank you, everyone. Uh, project Appreciate engineers it. on the phone as well. Did you have any comments, sir, before we uh, voted on it? Uh, nope, this is Peter McAuliffe. Yeah, I'm actually from Oya uh, Solar. No, I just want to thank everyone for reviewing the project today. Appreciate it. Okay, good. All right, okay. take care. Good. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Okay, what order are we going now? Uh, well, I think we'll go back to um, Alex Bay. Okay. Um, then we'll just go in alphabetical order. All right. Uh, yeah. So this proposal is in Alexandria Bay. It is for a child daycare business. It's right uh, on uh, Northern Avenue and, and Route 26, so south of Route 12 in this part of the village. And this is the parcel. Um, it's in the general residence zoning district. And um, the project is being allowed as a educational institution. That's how the zoning officer um, was, was looking at it. And it, that is a special use permit in this particular zone. And we're seeing it because it's um, on that state road that I mentioned. Um, you can see that a lot of the area are um, homes, um, but there is a hotel here and there's laundromat. And there's, so there's other businesses along Route 26 as well. Um, so th as I zoom in, this is what, what it looks like. So you can see that um, the house, 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 house. So it, uh, a number of homes in the area. These are all homes as well. Um, so this is the site as it was last week. And you can see that it's pretty densely wooded and brush. Um, it also kind of slopes uphill from there. This is, this is flat on the roadway, but then it goes up where the parcel is. Um, so you can see here that the um, contour lines, the dash ones are what it looks like now. So you can see it's pretty steep uh, upward climb up up here. And then the heavier black contours are the ones when they finish the site work and so on. So um, <clears throat> the green, uh, the heavier green is where they, they plan to keep the wooded areas. So it looks to me like this will be buffered quite extensively uh, on all sides of the project. Uh, which will help. Um, and then you can see that the there's parking for 42 spaces. Um, they're required to have 41. The actual building is 50, just over 5,700 square feet. So that'll be enough room for um, 76 kids uh, with a certain mix. Like I think certain age groups, they'll have certain rooms uh, catering to them. And so depending on the mix, it could be up to that number. Um, and out here is the outdoor playground area that's fenced off. So that's all part of the required stuff for to be a certified daycare. Um, let's see, they're just showing one or two lights here right together on the, on the edge of the parking lot. Um, they're showing a culvert here under the driveway and, but I don't see a lot of water management on the site. So one of my comments is that they should have some kind of retention areas or w whatever else you might want to do. Um, you know, dry wells or however you do that. And then, um, so trying to think. And, you know, you've got sidewalks along the building and along the parking areas. Um, there aren't any sidewalks on Northern Avenue. Um, so it's kind of how it is, I guess. Um, but a Jefferson County building permit is required. Uh, we, we found out that child care facilities serving three or more children for more than three hours a day on a regular basis requires a license from New York State Office of Children and Family Services. 
So um, then lastly, I mentioned, or locally, I mentioned the retention drainage facilities and retention areas perhaps be provided um, to ensure any increase in impervious surfaces do not result in stormwater runoff impacting Northern Avenue or and or the adjacent residences. Village engineers should verify the adequacy of the design stormwater facilities. Um, also, re retaining the trees, I think, would really um, maintain the buffering of, from the neighbors. And they're showing that, but we were just thinking how important that is. Um, and lastly, any signage details should be submitted and reviewed. Um, as you know, the village recently adopted a sign law and this would be one of the first ones to go through that process. I'm not sure if it's been recorded yet with the department or the secretary of state, but anyway, they, I didn't get any details on signs. Any other thoughts or comments? Don't they need a SWIP for that? Uh, how many acres are they going to disturb? Well, it's 0.95 acres, so they're just under the threshold. The threshold isn't one acre or more. Oh, okay. All right. So, is this a new build or is the build? Yes. Built? It's a new build. Um, do they have to have yep. any approvals from the Department of Health? Um, I was sort of saying it as the, uh, as the New York State Office of Children and Family Services. There may be a Department of Health it involved. I'm not sure okay. um, we can mention that. I think if they serve food, there has to be something, you know, from the Department of Health. Okay, yes, I will make a note of that in the, the letter going back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Okay, moving on to page three, Town of Clayton. Okay. Re yes, uh, so in the Town of Clayton, we are reviewing, uh, the applicant is Philip DeLuke uh, Jr. So DeLuke uh, Green, yeah, Greenhouse. And winery is, is up here on Route 12. Um, we reviewed this before when they established the winery part and maybe some other building changes. But what they're doing today is adding a 40 by 48 addition here, uh, sort of the same footprint, just extending that building out, so making that larger. And then um, adding a 10 by 104 foot addition to connect these three greenhouses in the front. So they'll all be connected with, uh, with that addition. And this is a site plan review in the Marine Development District in the town of Clayton. And we're seeing it because it's on Route 12. And um, I just zoomed in here. Uh, so this was submitted as part of their review. So this is the portion along the front here. And then the one over here I mentioned. Uh, this is just a zoomed in. So basically they're extending this building as I mentioned. And this was what it looked like the other day. It's getting a little, the rain was about to start at that point. And this is the other side. Um, and I have a, a picture of what that's gonna look like. So it'll be through here and you won't really see that other end of it too much. But this is a, a picture of what it'll look like probably from the manufacturer, I assume. But we didn't identify any issues or comments. Um, I, I think mainly because this use is well established, it's been there for a long time, and I, th I don't think you're really gonna notice much of a change. Okay. Questions, comments? Okay, moving on to page five. Okay which is uh, Pamelia, Town of Pamelia. Oh, yes, right. I'm, I'll get out of it and Sarah will, will finish up here. How many more do you have, Andy? Um, I think four. 
talk. I, I'm just trying to, you know, if we can move them along then uh, without going back and forth with each other. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I don't I don't have any more. These are all Sarah's now. Okay, good. Sorry. Yep. You're gonna be busy, Sarah, go to it. Um, I don't think it's showing. Um, what do you guys see? Well, we can see it the little PowerPoint. You just hit the slideshow icon. Yep. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I don't know what I did. No, you're good. You're good now. Yeah, well, not good for me, but well, okay. That, I'll try to work it. That's your um, location one, Sarah. That shows where I you know. are. Um, I've got the cleaners in here. Um, all right, let me find Camellia. Um, okay. This is site plan review for an addition at the NM Development Building, which is located at 239. Um, 791 Lawler Drive in Town of Familia. Um, okay. Uh, it's right there. It's located north of Interstate 781 on the east side of Route 37. So here we have Route 37 and Interstate 781 to the south. Um, this is the project site. And just above it to the north is Barrett Paving. And um, right here on the side on Route 37 is a business called Benefit Services Group. And that road that it's on is called Lawler Drive. Uh, this is a zoomed in image of the building. Um, the site is it's surrounded by non-residential uses. They're planning on doing a room addition over on this side. And also in conjunction with this site plan review, they're going to move this lot line over a little bit, about 35 feet over. Um, this is an image from Google Streets. Uh, there, that's the Benefit Services Group building. And this is Lawler Drive. and our subject building is down there. Um, the site is zone commercial. It allows material storage with site plan review. Um, the addition is shown in pink. It is 100 feet by 60 feet. It's a pre-engineered metal storage building. And it's situated about 10 feet away from the existing building, um, which is orange. This is also the existing uh, parking and S um, gravel, I believe. What's proposed all around the building is gravel, and this is so that vehicles can get around and park and or store more materials back there. Um, that's gonna be crushed stone, the darker gray. In order to meet the side yard setback, this lot line here is going to be adjusted 35 feet over to here. Um, so it's called a lot line adjustment, which they're receiving 35 feet from the neighboring parcel. The applicant owns both parcels, and even after the lot line adjustment, both parcels will meet the dimensional requirements for the commercial zone. So for comments, for county and state, we have a permit from Jefferson County code offices required for the building. And for local comments, in order to meet the setback requirements, a lot line adjustment is proposed, um, which requires town of Pamelia planning board approval. The local board should require the applicant file the approved lot line adjustment map with the county clerk within 62 days to properly transfer the property. The local board should ensure that there is adequate parking provided. The site plan should depict all the parking. Additionally, if parking is located in front of the building, it should be adequately screened from neighboring parcels. And on the um, part, <laughs> excuse me, part one of the environmental assessment form for seeker, it indicates that the project may be located in or adjacent to an area designated as sensitive for archaeological sites. So the local board should ensure this is addressed 
accordingly. Um, any questions on this one? Okay, good. Moving on. Okay. Um, Should be a city of Watertown now, right? Yes. Lisa, you're going to have a problem with this one? You're going to have to abstain? Lisa? Sorry, which one is this one? This is um, site plan review in the city of Watertown for Northern Credit Union. So it would go to the city council. Right. Um, I don't know if you have enough today. Yeah, we would have eight with you and seven without you. Okay. I mean... I can I can either abstain or I can vote here and abstain from the other. Well, do whatever you want to then, Lisa. All right, I'll vote on this. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is a site plan review for a proposed drive-through um, kiosk, I guess, for lack of better words, um, for Northern Credit Union. It is going to be located at 1851 State Street in the city of Watertown which is on the far east end of the city. Um, this would be the site. It's right across the street from Watertown Savings Bank, and it is adjacent to or next to, uh, what is this called, Save-A-Lot Grocery Store. And that's the plaza out there. Um, the site is surrounded by commercial uses. Uh, this is like Center for Site, and this is a Thai restaurant and some other restaurants that way. Uh, the site is owned commercial, which allows personal service oriented retail with site plan review. This is just a zoomed in picture of the site. It's currently vacant um, and there's no driveway to it currently. Um, here's a picture from Markham Savings Bank. I'm looking north across State Street. This is the site right here and you can see the grocery store in the background. Uh, this is from the grocery store parking lot looking south towards State Street, and you can see Wartone Savings Bank across the site. And this is looking again south where you can see all the site. Um, this is what the little drive-through ATM machine will look like. Um, <laughs> it's actually an internet teller machine which means it's live, like 24 seven, you can get uh, live assistance, you get an employee, I guess. Um, so it includes the construction of this internet teller machine and associated site improvements. Um, that's just another view of what it looks like. And this is what the sign would look like. Okay, this is the site plan. You can see there's gonna be a sidewalk, then a new driveway. It's gonna have a loop going around and if you go around right here where it's pink where the arrow is that's where the new internet teller machine is going to be this is actually concrete sidewalk not a structure um, in yellow you can see the proposed lights probably for security reasons um, it will be driving in that one direction going around um, there's there's gonna be new curbing signage and landscaping. And then the landscaping, um, there's like 11 mountain bat and juniper trees around the site and four Adirondack crab apples. And then there's an assortment of shrubs and perennials um, around the monument sign and around the edges too. And there was a big like welcome to Watertown sign out here. Uh, that's gonna be relocated somewhere else. I don't know where. Um, and then for comments, we have a highway work permit that's required from DOT. I know they've been coordinating with DOT um, for the new entrance. And then for local comments, <laughs> the short environmental assessment form for seeker indicates the project may be located in or adjacent to an area designated as sensitive for archeological sites. The local board should ensure this is addressed accordingly. Um, any questions on this one? How big is this architectural or uh you know, site there. Is that statewide or what? First time we've seen that. No, the the archaeological comment? Yeah. 
Uh, no, it just, it like popped positive for it in the short environmental assessment form. It's, it's area specific. So I, I do not believe some of my other projects have it, okay. but it just happened to be that Pamelia had it in three weeks. Okay, who, who makes that determination, the applicant? No, it come when they do the um, if they do the short environmental assessment form online, yeah, and they put yeah. in the right address and stuff, it's it's automatically populated. If that oh, okay, if it's a positive concern, mm -hmm. um, okay. So Shippo Shippo handles that. All righty. Okay. Okay. Moving All on. right. Time Moving on. along. Um. Okay. This is. For simplicity reasons, I'm going to combine the next two projects, which are known as lot 10 and lot 11 of the Jefferson County Corporate Park, which is just west of Interstate 81 on County Road 200, which is also known as Little Tree Drive. Um, so this is uh, County um, Route 12F, which is Coffeen Street. Um, we're just west of 81 here. The industrial park, the corporate park has County Route 200 in it. And this is Little Tree Corporate Headquarters. This is FedEx Warehouse. And then this is the subject parcel. On the left, you have lot 10. And on the right, you have lot 11 of the industrial park. Um, the surrounding land uses include a mix of light industrial and office uses. Um, it is zoned neighborhood commercial, which allows manufacturing offices and storage with site plan review. This is just a zoomed in picture image of lot 10 and lot 11. You can see that there is a little bit of a driveway already here on lot 10. Um, this is, I'm on Little Tree Drive, County Route 200, and I'm looking west towards lots 10 and 11 from FedEx. Um, here's a little bit closer view, look, still looking west um, at lots 10 and 11. And then here I'm looking directly north um, from Little Tree Drive at lots 10 and 11. And then this, I'm looking back northeast towards the FedEx manufacturing site and the lots 10 and 11 are over here. Um, so this is a combined site plan. It has lot 10 on the left and lot 11 on the right, exactly the way it is in real life. Um, I'm just gonna kind of, I'll start with lot 10 and work my way over towards lot 11. Um, both buildings will be 29,320 square feet plus or minus. Um, they consist of cold storage, manufacturing areas, and office space. Um, lot 10 on the left is a 4.21 acre site, and it includes a 24 foot access drive along the west side that loops around the back to access these uh, loading docks, and eventually it goes all the way onto little, uh, lot 11, and it ends in a hammerhead. Um, there are 40 parking spaces along this west side here, and there are 20 parking spaces in the front um, towards the east side of the building, and there's 11 parking spaces by the front door. There's a total of 71 parking spaces on lot 10. Um, up here, the proposed building is pink, and up here where it's kind of light green and it's got pink around it, that's the proposed outdoor storage area, equipment for equipment storage, and it is proposed to be fenced in with a privacy fence. Um, also, there is a shared access way right here in the middle, half on top lot 10 and half on lot 11. And um, there are seven trees proposed along the west side of lot 10 and 11 trees along the front. Um, the species weren't identified, although they did state that they would be selected for their hardiness and attractiveness. There are two signs proposed. One is right here, and one is right here. 
um, in the front yard on lot 10. So moving over to the right on lot 11, um, this is 4.59 acres. Basically, this proposal is a mirror image of lot 10 for the building, um, except for lot 11 doesn't have that extra access or drive lane with all the associated parking on the exterior side. Um, lot 11 will also use the shared access um, on the western side. And it provides a total of 31 parking spaces right here. Um, it has one sign located in the front sure. right here. And the drainage collection basins, basins are proposed up on the north, like the big ones here and this one. And then there's one down here um, for the southeast corner of lot 11. So for exterior elevations, the buildings basically look the same. Lot 10 is shown up on the top and lot 11 shown on the bottom. I think they're probably the exact same building. Um, exterior materials include metal roofing and siding and stack stone veneer along the office areas. Oh, the bottom part of the office area. And then for comments, um, a highway access permit is required from Jefferson County Highway Department. A building permit is required from Jefferson County Code Office. And any proposed lighting should incorporate dark sky compliant fixtures to limit potential glare impacts for pilots utilizing Wharton International Airport. Um, also, the applicant should complete FAA Form 7460-1 which is a notice of proposed construction or alteration as the project site is located within the geographic boundaries of the Wharton Airport FAR Part 77 surfaces. Um, a SWIP is required since total disturbance is greater than one acre. And then for local comments, the Neighborhood Commercial Zoning District specific site plan review guidelines include um, parking areas, shall be located to the rear or sides of structures. A pedestrian walkway is required within the front yard landscape buffer. Landscape islands and other pervious surfaces on the site shall be used as opportunities to treat stormwater. The project proposes, quote, drainage basins, quote, to address drainage. The site is located within the Watertown Airport hazardous wildlife avoidance area where the FAA recommends not citing wildlife attractants such as detention ponds that result in standing water. Retention ponds or other forms of green infrastructure are preferred. And regarding lot 10 specifically, the sign law states that signs are permitted, signs are limited to one per site while two are proposed on lot 10. Um, any questions on this one? Questions, anybody? Comments? No? Okay, moving on to page 10. Um, I think that was verbal powder. Power, I gotta go through that one, hold on. Okay. I think this is my final project. Um, this is also in the town of Watertown. This is for lot six in the Thousand Islands Ag Park, which we've reviewed a couple projects in there like CAS equipment, Eagle Beverage, and some chick hatchery. Um, it is on the western border of Watertown and Hounsfield. Um, it was referred to us because it's within 500 feet of that municipal boundary. And they, even though this doesn't show it, it's just west of Bosey. Um, so here's BOCES and here's State Route 3. Um, this is the Ag Park right here. This new road is in, comes down here and it curves and keeps going. This is now called Alexander Drive. Um, so we have a name for that. And um, this is lot six. We re in 2020, we reviewed Eagle Beverage on lot six. Um, since then, Eagle Beverage jump ship and they built over here um, on this little other parcel. 
Uh, the site is zoned neighborhood commercial, which allows retail services with site plan review. Um, surrounding land uses include a mix of commercial manufacturing um, and educational to the east, which is both east and ag agricultural to the west in the town of Hounsfield. Um, this is a photo. I'm on Alexander Drive here. I'm looking towards the southwest. This, the site is right here on my right, and about three quarters of the way down on the site, the paved road turns into gravel. That'll eventually be updated, upgraded. This is just looking west at lot six in the TI Ag Park. So it's kind of looking towards Hounsfield. Um, so this is the site plan. Again, this is Alexander Drive. And right around this curve is, is where the pavement stopped and it became gravel that I showed you in that one photo. And um, north, here's the north arrow, so it's up to the top left of the site. Um, so you can see there are two proposed driveways, this is 24 foot wide, and then there's one over here that is 24 foot wide here, but I think it's a little, it might be a little wider there, I don't know. Um, And then there are 30 parking spaces in the rear, which are called employee parking. And there's 56 parking spaces in front of the building. The proposed building is shown in pink. It's 60 feet by 200 feet. Um, and it includes a drive through window right here um, on the south side of the building. Um, it appears that the site drains um, along this north side um, and the west side with these little V's. I think that's to indicate drainage. Um, the storage drainage basin is located over here um, on the south side along the curve. The dumpsters, there's two dumpsters proposed to be located at the ends of these roads. Um, a row of trees is proposed along the north side and between the second driveway and the, the drainage basin. Um, lights are shown along the street margin. There's three groups of them right there, one, two, and three. And then there's wall packs along the exterior of the building. Um, as far as comments go for county and state, we have a stormwater pollution prevention plan uh, SWIFT is required and a Jefferson County building permit is required. An ag data statement is required because the site is within 500 feet of a New York State Ag District. And under local, um, the short environmental assessment form states stormwater will flow onto adjacent properties. The site plan depicts the drainage arrows, which may be impeded by the dumpster, the location of the dumpsters and the driveways. Um, the town engineer should review the site's overall drainage and ensure the proposed swales and drainage basin areas are sufficient and that neighboring parcels are not adversely affected. Um, the Neighborhood Commercial Zoning District specific design guidelines include parking areas shall be located to the rear or sides of site structures, landscape islands and other pervious surfaces on the site shall be used as opportunities to treat stormwater. The project proposes a storage drainage basin to address drainage. The site is located within the airport hazardous wildlife avoidance area where the FAA recommends not siting wildlife attractants such as detention ponds that result in standing water. Retention ponds or other forms of green infrastructure are preferred. Um, access points should maintain 500 foot separation while the project proposes two access points approximately 350 feet apart. The second access is on a reverse curve, which presents a safety hazard if and when a large events venue is constructed immediately to the south. The local board should consider allowing only one access point located farther to the north on this parcel. Pedestrian connections should be provided along the main roadway. Adjacent developments such as BOCES and the future events venue to be located to the south. Um, there is a maximum of impervious surface of 
So it should be they, it should be calculated and identified on the site plan. And lighting shall be dark sky compliant. Any questions on them? That? Questions, anybody? All right, uh, this is going to pertain to the projects uh, number two, Alexandria Bay, number three, Clayton, uh, number five, Penelia, number six, uh, City of Watertown, and numbers seven and eight, Town of Watertown, and finally, uh, number 10, uh, Town of Watertown also. Motions made that these are projects of local concern only and to be returned to the applicant with appropriate comments. Motion made, is there a second? Somebody? Second. Charlene, thank you. Okay. Motion made, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Those motions are adopted. We're all set. Andy, what else do we need to do? Um, I. I believe a training notice went out or is going out regarding um, middle, middle of September. I'm sorry? Middle of September sometime? Yes, I think it might be the 20th. Um, so if, if you haven't gotten that, look for it. If we need to send it again, let us know. And it's, it'll be on site plan and special use permits, I believe from the Department of State. Yep, September 20th. And then uh, I guess my only other thing was we, we were really hemming, hemming and hawing about a live meeting versus virtual. And we ended up doing virtual. Uh, we, we didn't know if people had strong feelings about avoiding uh, virtual or avoiding in person still or not. Um, so Mike, I think will send emails about that out individually, you know, so. Well, certainly from my standpoint, it's easier to get a quorum if we meet virtually, but uh, if they change the laws, so be it. Yeah, yeah, if they don't extend the, uh, whatever that is, we, we won't be able to do virtual. Without the county adopting some kind of a thing and we weren't really sure that they would do that. So sort of, I guess we're on giving you a little bit of a notice that it all depends on the state at this point. Okay, anything else? Nope. Lisa. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks everybody for your participation. Talk to you next Thank month. You. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.